Hey, welcome to our HQ Live. I'm Kelly Ashton. I'm the Education Manager, and I'm here today with Christina Whitney and Kim Sandberg. Um, we're the educators, along with Johnny Barfus in the studio. We're missing Johnny today, so but we'll get him next time. And we wanted to talk today a little bit about how to decide how you're going to quilt a quilt. So how do I quilt it? Um, one of my dear friends said to me, um, I can't believe you're doing this because I remember the day when you would hang up your quilts and stare at them for days before you could that. figure out what to quilt on them. <laughs> I said, I still do. <laughs> Me too. But sometimes it's really nice to have friends that we can kind of share with and talk about and, and help figure out how we want to quilt it. But we wanted to really share with you our thought process that we go through mm -hmm. when we're thinking about how we want to design our stitching that's going to go onto this quilt top so that we can finish it and have quilts. So, all right. So the first thing um, that I think about or that we all have talked about that when we're deciding what to quilt on the quilt, we think about is how are we going to use the quilt? Right. Right. How does that make a difference? It makes a really big difference. If you're going to use a quilt, for example, as a wall hanging, um, I always like to quilt them much more densely so that they will hang straight and flat. But for example, if I want to do a quilt that I'm going to wrap a baby up in, I want it to have a looser quilting so that it is soft and cuddly to snuggle up in. Okay. You also want to take into consideration your time. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a quilt that's going to be, you know, dragged around, taken to the beach, you know, used a lot, you're not necessarily going to want to spend a ton of time right. doing intricate work. Good point. So how the quilt is going to be used is a huge factor. Mm -hmm. um, I do just really want to insert here that um, batting choice is a huge factor nice. too. So I love to quilt things to death. I don't know. How about you two? It depends. Yep, depends so, on what it's for. Okay. I really have to <laughs> hold how much back. Time I, have. I have to hold back when it's a quilt for my grandbabies because I do oh, yes. want them to snuggle up in my quilts. I do. But if I use a, a batting more like wool... I can add some more dense quilting to it, and it still can be a nice, soft, snuggly blanket. So, so we can have a whole nother session on batting, I think. But yeah. batting is yep. a huge factor in that, too. So, yeah. Okay, so the first thing we think about is how the quilt's going to be used. Um, then the other thing is uh, design style. And so we have a few samples here of maybe Ooh, design samples. style. samples. Yay! Okay, so this would be considered... Um, now, we have a lot of threads here, but... We're quilters. We can handle that, right? Absolutely. Open it up a more. This, oh. this would be, let's use this side because those are kind of more. We would consider this more of a traditional quilt. And if you haven't already guessed it yet, this is an underground railroad. But mm -hmm. what is it about this quilt that makes it to be a more traditional quilt? The fabric choices, the color, right. and okay. the blocks also. And the blocks, right, yeah. yeah. These are really traditional blocks. Okay, so when you we're know? thinking about traditional quilting, what are some designs that you might think of for traditional quilting? Feathers. Feathers. Cross hatch. Yeah. Right. I always think of stitch in the ditch, too, just highlighting yeah. the piecing and thinking about how, you know, a really traditional quilt like this originally would have been hand quilted and quite often doing... Uh, stitch in the ditch uh -huh. was the way that they quilted things. They did a lot. A right. lot of that. So, by okay. Hand. All right. Now, this quilt, I've shown it before, but I think you could consider these blocks to be traditional oh, yeah. pieced blocks, couldn't yes. you? Absolutely. So, would we consider this to be a traditional quilt top? No. I'd say this is a little bit more modern. Yeah. The colors. <laughs> are a lot brighter, Okay. Yeah. a lot more playful. Also, the way that it is set. You know, this one before was done with a traditional sashing and mm. cornerstones and borders right. and all that. This is very, 
you know, there's no symmetry here. It's very, uh, there's lots of uh, negative Play space. Area. Yeah, exactly. It's negative <laughs> space. It's <laughs> a fun <laughs> space. Now, I have to say, when I was a new long arm quilter and I had a quilt that had negative space, I went, oh, Terrified. no, what am I going to put there? Uh -huh. yeah. Now I get super excited. Yes, negative space. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Me I love too. negative space. So. So for people that are watching, you know, that's something to look forward to. So maybe today you're not quite ready to do the negative space, mm -hmm. but in the future that might be something that you'll enjoy doing. Yeah. yeah. You just have to try it and see. Absolutely. Okay, so besides traditional, besides modern, this quilt, I'm going to have to say, would be, it's a buggy barn quilt. Well, it's not buggy barn anymore, it's, but it was a buggy barn yeah. quilt. We're going to call this one kind of more whimsical. Oh, yeah. For sure. So what kind of quilting could we add to a whimsical oh, quilt? Wow. This just screams fun. I love whimsical quilting. Yes. Nothing has to be symmetrical. Exactly. Nothing has to be precise. You just get to doodle and have fun on a yep. whimsical quilt. And yep. these are purses. And I love it. So I can I just can't wait to quilt it. It's an older pattern, older fabric. Some of you might recognize, but it's still a quilt that I'm just dying to get on my machine. Mm -hmm. This is when, when I look at this, the fabric is really whimsical too. It's a lot of fun geometric things. It, yeah. This is a quilt that I would automatically start pulling designs from the fabric mm -hmm. to quilt. It's all, all these fun loops. Oh, and yeah. circles. Thanks for pointing that yeah. out, Kim. There's this a lot of things. This fun geometric design mm -hmm. here. Lots of fun things to do there. And yeah. like you said, very whimsical because I this would be really fun to quilt every block, just a little bit different. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Okay. This one, um, along the same lines, I'm going to have to say instead of whimsical, this one would be maybe more ornate, mm -hmm. more, um, more along the traditional lines again. Yeah. So when we're thinking about how to quilt this, um, wow. I think of feathers again. Mm -hmm. I also love continuous curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love to put, anytime I get little squares, I just want to put two inch, I, I'm not two inch, I want to put continuous curve in there somewhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. This one just yells at me that it needs to have a feather wreath that can reach into all of uh -huh. these little points in here and fill yeah. the whole space. Yeah, that would be beautiful. And this is definitely one that I would quilt to death because you know this is going to be a table topper and make it lay yeah. nice and flat. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's going to be on that flat surface where people can really admire the quilting. So this is a show-off project, especially, too, because of the size of it. Yeah. It's small enough that it is not overwhelming at all. I look at that and I go, oh my gosh, that's like an afternoon of fun. Right. <laughs> I can quilt it to death in an afternoon exactly. instead of two months. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Then the next thing we think about is maybe does the quilt have like a theme? Mm -hmm. So um, this is just a... Oh, fun. So Kelly, is... these are all your quilt tops, right? Yeah. You have some work to do. <laughs> I'm, re I'm recruiting my friends. <laughs> We're here do we, for do you. Do we need to call dibs here? Is that what yeah, you're telling you me? Which, which one do I want? <laughs> I kind of want the purse. and Yeah. Oh, um, they're so fun. Anyway, what do we see in this quilt that automatically gives you ideas of how you can quilt yeah. it? Yeah. Got cactus Cactuses. Here. Horseshoes. Horseshoes. You've, we've cowboy got like, hats. Yeah, spurs and cowboy boots. Lassos. Guitars. Ropes. Yeah. This one has pretty busy fabric, so I would think, you know, an edge-to-edge -edge design mm -hmm. incorporating some of these designs. I've done one that has horseshoes and stars in it, Yeah, and cute. it turned out really cute. So, so, yeah, this one even has musical notes on yeah. it. I mean, this has a little bit of everything. <laughs> Almost looks like so, palm trees. <laughs> it even has, like, little bees. I mean, there's just oh, yeah. cowhide. There's mm -hmm. just so many things that you could put. Oh, but, but because of the theme of the fabric, yeah. it all of a sudden sparks lots of ideas in your yeah. mind. So just as, you know, when you're looking and thinking about your quilts, look at your fabric because mm -hmm. besides the quilt block and besides the colors, the fabric can often give you great ideas of how you can quilt it. So. Absolutely. Um, okay, yeah, what about this one? Ooh. That's okay, cool. you might have to cover your eyes for a minute because it's kind of busy. That is just a little. Busy, it's busy, busy and bright. Okay. Wow. Look at that. So, Lots. it's kind of cute. I really like green. It's fun, but <laughs> I don't know that the quilting, whatever you decide to do on this is really going to show. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. Because this is so full of busy prints, 
um, no matter what we decide to quilt on here, you're going to lose most of your quilting. Mm -hmm. So if this is, if you're really dying to spend 20 to 30 hours on a quilt, this might not be the mm -hmm. one you want to do that on. Yep. This is a really good place that you could practice feathers if you wanted to, <laughs> because you would never see your, oops. Yep. But on a busy printed fabric, the point is you're going to lose a lot of your quilting. Um, this block, the black one, this white block, we might see some of our quilting, but the rest of it, you're really going to lose yeah. what you quilt on it. What so, if you wanted your quilting to show on something like this? Why did, we, why did we know Christina was going to say that? <laughs> is there a way you can do that, Christina? <laughs> yes, you could use a very thick thread in a contrasting color. Like sure. I suggested, you know, using neon pink <laughs> as a joke, but you know, if you wanted your quilting to show, there are we got to think some outside the box sometimes. Yep. And yep. if you wanted your quilting to show, if you used a heavier thread, I'm saying a 12 weight so sassy, oh. your thread would take over yeah. and and have some really spectacular showcase on this quilt. Um, if you chose for, your hot pink. Yes. For those that are viewing that might not know what So Sassy is, that is a type of thread from Superior Threads. It's a 12 weight, so it's really thick. You could so almost fun. even stitch like yeah. red work. I've done mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. You, just yep. using that thread and a pro stitcher, fun times. Well, fun we're times. talking about thread. <laughs> what kind of a needle would you use, need to use with a 12 weight thread? Just Ooh, like I'd a go for a 20 or yeah. higher. Yeah. yeah so. so if you were going to yeah. use a heavy thread like that, get yourself a bigger needle. So. Um, one thing I wanted to say is um, one of my really good quilter friends, she is an amazing piecer. She's one of the girls we would call a, or women that would be a, considered a prolific quilter. She mm. pieces quilts like crazy, but she doesn't necessarily enjoy the finishing project, so she takes it to other people to have it quilted. And that's okay with us long-arm quilters. <laughs> we like that too, right? But um, she was explaining the process to her nine-year-old granddaughter, and she's like, I take all these beautiful fabrics, and I cut them up into little tiny pieces, and then I sew them all back together. <laughs> Let's look at a more intricately pieced quilt, all right? Well, I sew them all back together and make these fun designs out of these pieces of fabric. And then she said, then I take it to this lady or this man, and, and he does the quilting. He puts the back and the batting and the top together and, and finishes it. And the nine-year-old thinks for a minute and says, I think that lady is the one who deserves all the credit. It what? broke her piecing heart. Oh my gosh. So my point is, I don't ever want to quilt a quilt where I take away from right. the heart and soul that was put into the piecing of the fabric. Yes. So always be considerate of, of what was put into the piecing and right. that if you can contribute to the piecing, enhance it, um, make it more beautiful somehow, then your then your quilting is an art itself. But but I don't ever want my quilting to take the showcase on a quilt or detract from the piece. someone from else. The piecing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if the piecing is the showcase part yeah. of the quilt. Yeah. Sometimes there's quilts like the one that we had here that had the gray in the background. This one, with all of this negative space, the quilting yeah. is going to show a little more. And this yeah. is the type of a quilt where the quilting can take a little bit more of front stage. Yeah. But you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. Yep. So yep. the other thing I want to point out is, is there anything wrong with quilting in an edge-to-edge? -edge? No. no. One, one other suggestion I have for a quilt like this, if you, and, and I've done a lot of customer quilts in my day, and Edge to edge is my bread and butter yeah. for customer quilting. Um, a lot of people who would bring me a quilt like this that is very busy, but they, for example, say that they really wanted to showcase a fun design like this flower, and we took and yeah. digitized this. What we would do is use a backing where that design would really show up. For example, maybe we'd put a minky on the back of this. And That's so the quilting right. isn't necessarily going to really show on the front of the quilt, but on the back yeah. of the quilt, when you flip it over, it's a really awesome surprise. Have you ever used cuddle on the back oh, of a quilt? Best thing ever. Yeah. If you best want your quilts ever. to be used, <laughs> yep. you put some cuddle on the back, and it showcases your quilting like crazy. Yes. Exactly. So, yeah. Even if it's just a fun edge to edge, it really yeah. showcases it. Yeah. And it also hides any tension issues. Yes. the thread just sinks right up there. <laughs> yeah, it does that too. It does that too. Such a good job of that. Okay. Um, back to decisions that were earth. Thoughts that we're thinking of when we're deciding what, how to quilt the quilt is um, 
also what is your skill level? Right. Because if we're, if we're talking as a group of us together and helping someone decide how they want to quilt a quilt, and we say, just quilt feathers all over it, <clears throat> and Christina is going, <laughs> no, I no, don't no. like feathers. I actually do. She but. does. I'm just making that <laughs> up. But is she, are we yeah. helping her? No. 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 no, so find out about the skill level of the person that's quilting it mm -hmm. and help them um, find a, a quilting design that they'll enjoy mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. I stippled on quilts for oh, yeah. four or five years. Yep. That's all I knew how to do. Those tops, back then I pieced a lot, and I, I was okay at piecing. Today I'm not as good a, a piecer, <laughs> but... <laughs> But I look back on those quilts and go, oh, if only I had, you know. But the, the key there is their quilts. Right. They're, they're not done. just quilt tops. They're, they're finished. quilts. They're, they're finished. finished. Yep. And people are enjoying those quilts. So whatever your skill level is, mm -hmm. go with it and enjoy it. Enjoy the whole process. Yep. And so. going along with that, your skill level might not be as high as you'd like, but push yourself. Yeah. Maybe say, okay, I'm going to stipple on this quilt, but oh, I'm going to add a little heart into the stipple. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Or I'm going to add a star. And each quilt that you do, try something new. Then your little your skills. library of mm -hmm. designs will increase and you'll be able to have more options in the future. Yeah. I've, I've said this over and over again, but that's one of the reasons why I love quilting so much is because I feel like... I grow and I learn mm -hmm. with every single quilt I yep. do. Yep. Every one I take off the frame, I can say, oh, I love this, or oh, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Glad I even with that, I'm never going to do it again. That's still something you learn. Right. Yeah, yeah I've got yeah, lots exactly. of those. I just uh, keep telling too. myself I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> learning okay. not to do that again. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to actually put some quilt tops, some different quilt tops out in front of, um, on the table here. And we're going to, we've actually talked about, or we've, decided some ways that we would probably go about quilting them. And we're going to share that with you and kind of our thought process on, on the designs that we chose mm -hmm. and why we went the direction that we did. So, so this is a quilt top. Um, it was pieced in my shop. It's by a, a quilt or a pattern designer called Thankfully Sew. It's called Sewing Strips. So we thought this was kind of a good showcase of different ideas of how we would quilt this. So should we start with you, Christina? Show us, we, we actually, show us, where's the oh, preview paper? Right here. So, so preview paper is a fun way to audition different designs. So this was actually, um, Quilter's preview paper was designed by Suzanne Highland. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect way for us to kind of do what Christina said, is just audition designs and see if we like them. So, Okay, so tell us about what you decided. So I decided that in this section here, we've got these long strips. The fabric's pretty busy. I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time in there. So I was going to do an edge-to-edge -edge or border-to-border -border inside this section of the quilt. Okay. But in the sashing here, I thought, oh, you know, I'm looking at these fabrics and mm. there's flowers all over in the fabric. So I thought, I'm going to incorporate that into my quilting. So do a fabric, um, or sorry, not a fabric, a flower down the sashing part. Okay. And I did it in the border down here as well. Mm. Okay. And Let's then, line this yeah, we got to shift this over just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Um, I did a lot of stitch in the ditch just around all of the different pieces. And then I went back in and did a, an echo inside all the white. Because the white's going to really show the quilting mm -hmm. the most. So I did a little echo because that kind of draws the eye. And then I filled the squares or the triangles with some kind of whimsical feathers. Mm -hmm. And then just a really dense, I'm going to call it a scribble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just a scribble in that to really pull that down and it'll make that channel It's really going to make that, that shape pop. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I chose to do on Love this it. one. Okay. Is it the right way or the wrong way? No, who, it's Christina's way. Who yep. gets to decide if it's right or wrong? Well, if it's, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say me. I'm gonna say whoever owns the quilt. Right. Because if okay. I'm doing it for hire, I don't want to do it my way and then give it back to the owner of the quilt and have them be like, uh, I don't like that. Okay. 
even though it's something that I would love. Right. So I would say the, the owner of the quilt. If it's my own personal quilt, then yes, I'm going to quilt it however I want to quilt it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I have to say I quilted for customers for years, and I didn't, I don't remember one of them saying, I want this done. They would all say, quilt it how you'd want Quilter's to. Quilter's choice. Quilter's <laughs> choice. Yep. So this goes right here. So Christine oh, and I fun. were kind of similar. Um, mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to extend those white squares. So Ooh. I made the squares go out into those borders. Cute. So the flower was no longer kind of the focus. I just kind of went with the squares, and I gave three different options of how I would fill the squares. And then I kind of stitched in the ditch like you did, mm -hmm. and I, I stitched densely down the white part so this colored part would be allowed to pop just a little bit more. And um, everything you said about edge to edge in this, in this busy fabric makes perfect sense. But when I see something like this, I'm like, yes, a perfect place to practice designs. Yes. Yes. So I would want to load this quilt so that it was horizontal across my bars so that these strips went along with my bars. And with each of those strips, it gave me a perfect opportunity to just play with a design that I wanted to practice. So, but what you said, because it's printed, it's not really gonna stand out. So I tried to choose designs that might give it a little bit of texture. Okay. And the texture will stand out. The quilting is not going to. Right. But the texture might show up, show up just a little bit. So that's, and I really like to quilt things to death. So <laughs> it's, that's what I did. I love it. So, Kim. I love it. Okay, so I am a pro-stitcher quilter. And so my design process is a little different than these two. I do have preview paper and I use it every once in a while, but I tend to go to my designer, which here on the screen, and I open up some files and start playing with it. What is um, your designer? My designer is Pro Stitcher Designer. Excellent. So it's our, it's our awesome uh, design software that's available. Anybody can use it. Even if you are a free motion quilter, you could use yeah. this to help design quilts. One of the really cool things we can do is, if you guys see here on the screen, I'll um, zoom out a little bit. You can see I've actually got a picture here of the quilt. And because the picture was kind of taken at an angle, I don't actually have the designs laying on top of it because they're not true and square. I have them laying right next to it. But that way I was able to audition the designs. So I had some of the same ideas that, that you guys did. I think we all kind of think along the same lines. <laughs> but I thought it would be really fun to take this fun square that has these hearts in it and lay that over this block right here and quilt that on the block. And then use these different rows to fill in these strips here. And if you look really closely at these, you'll notice that they're not all the same size. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that I played around with, some of them are the same size and like this one's a little narrower, this one's a little bigger, this one's a little bigger to fill in the different spaces. I always look at a quilt like this as an opportunity to play with a bunch of different patterns. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go into the Pro Stitcher library and I'm gonna pick some designs that maybe I have never used before and I'm gonna use them on this quilt because just like you're saying, the quilting is not necessarily gonna show up as much, but we wanna have the texture in there and it's really good practice laying out those rows, setting up that area and quilting those designs in there. I love it. So that's what I would do. So I've got a question for you, Kim. Okay. If you took a picture straight on mm -hmm. of the quilt, could you put the design absolutely. over top absolutely. of the quilt background? Yes, yes, you okay. absolutely can. I can actually show you guys here. I can grab this and I can pull it up and set it right over the top of it like that. And then we'll do a little zoom in so you guys can see a little better. And if I click over here to the side, you can see that over the top of it. And I can manipulate that and play around with it a little more so that the stitching will show up more. But absolutely, we can totally do that. Excellent. So, yep. What a great idea. Okay, let's go to our next quilt. So this quilt, the picture was a little bit better. So I was able to actually lay some blocks on top of it. Now this vintage quilt, I love quilting vintage quilts. And I love kind of finding that fun secondary pop. And I love how this um, quilt has circles in it. There's, there, there is a circle that's actually pieced, but these designs create these like pinwheel pieces, create a circle. So I pulled some fun circle designs from Pro Stitcher and just dropped them in here. And then my thought would be, 
let's really have some fun with this. Let's do these designs and then let's pull in some fun backgrounds. You guys can see down here on the bottom of the screen, I've got some fun backgrounds here that I would actually bring and use to fill in these spaces in between. So I would really have some fun doing custom quilting because this quilt where it is all solids, all of my quilting is gonna pop and be all amazing. It. So it's worth the time to go ahead and do these special designs and set them up. And then my thought also was, I really like the idea of having a little bit more complex quilting here in the middle and then around the border, using something like these simple um, continuous curves inside these borders, awesome. which would be fun. Mm -hmm. So that was my idea. Um, the, the reason we chose this quilt top is because we just kept looking at it and seeing something different mm -hmm. every time we kind of looked at it. So, so yeah. show us yours, Christina. Well, the, we could show this one. We nabbed Vicki and had her draw. Oh, very cool. Um, and she kind of went with the circles mm -hmm. and did the squares separately. Mm -hmm. yep. She did like the sunflower here with her um, little pebbles in the pebbles. center. Oh, fun. Little swirl in the center of that mm -hmm. one. Okay. All right, show us yours, Christina. Okay, let's see if I can get it positioned here. Oh, that's fun. So this is actually a quilt top that my grandmother pieced. And you talked earlier about having quilts up on your design wall for a while. Yeah. I have been looking at this one for probably about five years now. Really? <laughs> I just can't decide how I want to quilt it. So that's why I've got you guys here. So I look at this one, and you pointed out, you know, this circular design here. Well, I also kind of thought it looks like a jester's hat to me yeah. with, like, the little oh. thingies on the end. Yeah. So I did it more, you know, going out that way. Very cool. Um, I started from the center and wanted to emphasize that shape, so I did these rays coming out mm -hmm. and then filled in in between. So even though this is a circle here, it's part of this one. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just kind of... I love how your design uh, creates movement within the quilt too. Like when you look at that, as it's, as it's quilted like that, it's going to make your eye travel and make you like look almost in circles. Or get really dizzy. <laughs> One or the other. Hey, it's a jester hat, right? Yeah. Why not? It's kind of like a, I just a happy, I don't know, yeah. circus. It's just, because mm -hmm. yeah. I kind of saw a jester's hat too. Oh, very cool. So I saw your design first, Christina, and then I decided to try to find a different design. So what I was oh, trying cool. to get to stand out was like a smaller mm -hmm. jester's hat. Can oh, you see the difference? I hadn't even seen the little jester's hat. Yeah. So I, cool. I would leave these unquilted, like just stitched in the <gasps> ditch. You're because not quilt those, to death? I know. I am these, though. I'm going to quilt this part to death. Okay. Now, when I first learned how to quilt, everybody said, just make sure that your quilting is evenly spaced throughout everything. Right. But well, that, doesn't, have that doesn't show anything. No. And if you, it's evenly spaced everywhere, no. I, and I'm a good rule follower, so I followed that rule for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I saw someone like crossing their lines and stuff like that and changed my quilting world. <laughs> so, but I, I, I think if you're going to quilt edge to edge, spacing is important. But when right. you're trying to get something to make an impact with your quilting and you want something to stand out, like I wanted these little, I've lost my shape, this little mm -hmm. four cornered shape, I mm -hmm. wanted it to pop out. So by not quilting it densely and quilting densely by it, those unquilted places will have an opportunity to kind of lift exactly. up and say, hey, look at me. So Especially if you use double layer of batting. With yeah. Batting. Yep, right. that would so, really pop. so tell me about the double layer of batting because that's new to some people. What do you mean you double layer batting? Um, so if you want your quilting to really show, a lot of people like to use a layer of, say, an 80-20 mm -hmm. um, uh, on the bottom and then on top of that, another layer of the wool batting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that wool has that loft, so it really shows off the quilting. Yeah. yeah. And it, it has the ability to just kind of, wherever it's not quilted, just kind of poof out a it's little like bit. It's like it's trying to escape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I just like something firm under it, like 80-20 or even cotton. Yeah. And then with the wool on top, it just really allows your quilting to have a wow yeah. factor. So. Well, yeah. And the, the important thing to remember is the spaces that you don't quilt, the spaces that aren't quilted is what your eye is drawn to, just like you were right. saying. So, you know. 
this is where your eye is gonna be drawn. You're gonna be drawn inside that swirl. Where this is packed down really tightly with quilting, that's not necessarily where your eye is gonna go. So as you're planning your quilting, that's something to consider. Where do you want to draw the yeah. viewer's eye? Yeah. And the other thing is, is I like to make my quilting as continuous line mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. So um, sometimes when, when I draw a design out like this, I it might take me a couple of passes to figure out the best continuous line, mm -hmm. yep. but oft oftentimes I'll have to kind of uh, follow my stitching, stitch over, do another stitch over to get to another place. But you can make something like yes. this very continuous line by just a little practice. So. Yeah, I like here your spiral thing. It could travel up to here to lay, lead you to that next section and then over the next one. Yeah. yeah. But it gives you an in and an out. So that's kind yeah. of fun. It would take a little practice. I might yeah. even have to like stitch in that the ditch of the box to yeah. get to the next square or something. But and by drawing it out, I could figure that out. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of the stitch in the ditch is that it's your mm -hmm. hidden travel line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can get from one place to another just yeah. stitching along on that ditch. I, I talk about stitch in the ditch a lot because I like it. It's not a must. It's a personal choice, but, mm -hmm. but it's an easy out. <laughs> yes, yes. It well, is, and it stabilizes yep. your quilt, too. Like, if you know yeah. you're going to be spending a little bit of time on your quilt, I always yeah. love to do stitch in the ditch first because then it stabilizes everything. I can move back and forth on my quilt. I can even pull it off my frame if I need to and put it right. back on, and everything's held together and stabilized well. Yep. And oftentimes, I mean, I know... Discredit to grandma at all, but oftentimes our grandmother's quilts aren't really laying flat because mm -hmm. they didn't have rotary cutters, they didn't have those Perfect big straight well. rulers, and they didn't have even the sewing machine tools. They were yeah. they were hand piecing a lot of their pieces, mm -hmm. and so a lot of their quilts don't lay flat. Mm -hmm. And it's important to keep the fullness where the fullness is supposed to be. So by right. stitching in the ditch, we can keep that space more square and keep the fullness where it needs to be. So I'm a fan of it. Yeah, so. me too. Excellent. All so right. what else do we have, Kelly? We have, okay, oh so on this quilt, oh, <laughs> should we show the quilt? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. this is such a cute quilt. Just here. don't move, move it. it. Okay, I have to give a little shout out to my friends at Quilting Mayhem. They pieced this one for me. Uh, I'll have to get the name of it. It's just a really cute Kit that they had, but yeah. this was a good sample for us to show you talk about how to quilt borders. Is are borders your favorite thing? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, They're a lot of extra work. I yeah. actually love to quilt borders, and I like to plan my borders first. Oh, because especially on a sampler quilt like this. So, mm -hmm. um, if you go back to, I don't know if any of you have read the quilt design books where there's five or ten basic shapes. Yeah that you draw from when you're quilting. And if I can design my border on a sampler quilt, I'm gonna fold this like this a little bit, then I can easily decide what I'm going to put in the blocks, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. So here's my border. Oh, fun. So you start with the border first when you're designing I do. It. Maybe that's what my problem is. Yeah. Well, I, everybody has blocks. to do their own. Yeah. There's there's no one right way. This just works best for, for Kelly's brain, right? Okay. So, and this quilt actually has one, two, three, four borders. And um, so you could quilt all four of those individually or you could quilt them together. But here's, here's what I opted to do. I chose to make this middle gray border like a cable kind of. Oh, wow. And then... I used an arc to kind of wrap the arc around the cable. Mm -hmm. And then I love feathers. So I, I did put feathers kind of around that cable. And then I used piano keys with a swirl. So back to the, the design basics I used. I used straight lines. Mm -hmm. I used a curl, or I mean a swirl. I used an arc. Mm -hmm. And I used a feather. So I used four basic designs. So now when I go to the center of the quilt and I'm, I'm trying to decide how to quilt each individual different block, I'm going to choose designs from those four shapes. Mm. And I feel like on a um, sampler quilt like this, it gives me some continuity in my quilting yeah. because I'm repeating. I'll either put feathers here or, or I might put feathers and straight lines here or I might put arcs mm -hmm. and curls here, but I'm going to take one, two, three, or, or all four of those shapes and repeat them in, in the blocks throughout my quilt. 
That's a good tip. So yeah. this an example would be the quilt on the back wall. So I chose to use um, straight lines mm -hmm. and arcs and, well, I chose some circles. I might have chose loops. Sometimes I add other ones. But if I focus on three, two, three, four mm -hmm. basic shapes, it helps me just kind of in my planning process. But back to borders. They're my favorite thing to do, but there's, there's several different ways that you can quilt them. And this one right here is called like a wraparound border mm -hmm. because I wrapped that um, feather around the border. You can either stop at the corners, you can quilt to here, and then quilt to there, like stop the corners this way. Do a cornerstone. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different ways to mm -hmm. approach a border. Yeah. And you might not be able to do them all the same, so it just helps to kind of play with yeah. different ideas, so. Yeah. I think a lot of people are intimidated by the wraparound border, especially yeah. new pro stitcher users. Yes. Trying to figure out how to get around that border. So your idea of using a cornerstone oh. in the corner and just straight yep. area there. It solves that, the problem. Yep. Yeah. That would be a great idea. Yeah. Stitch a block in the corner and have the border come right up to those edges. Mm -hmm. Super e easy. Even when your fabric is the same fabric. Yeah. So Just create, create yeah. a fun um, eye-catching design right there yeah. in the corner. Yep. You could maybe, on this quilt, I'm just seeing you know, the square here, and I'm seeing all these squares there. Repeat that design oh, yeah. in there and in all of the cornerstones. That yeah, would be really fun because they're at the bottom and the top of the quilt. It would be a great way, like Kelly's saying, picking just a few designs and repeating them throughout the quilt. That's a great start right there. I was going to say one more thing. Um, the, fit, the white borders, everything we quilt there is going to really stand oh, yeah. out beautifully. Anything I quilt out here in this beautiful flower, it's not going to show as much. Right. So that's why I opted for the piano keys and every other one being swirled because this gives a lot of texture mm -hmm. and I'm going to see that texture more than I'm going to see the design I quilted. Right. So show us what you quilted or okay, what so you would quilt. I did the more time efficient version <laughs> and when I look at this quilt, I, I feel, you know, happy and joyful and just kind of playful. So I opted to do all four layers of the border as one. Cool. And I did, you know, the stem going around, and I just played and did different swirls, um, different types of feathers, and, yeah, just make it up as you go. But it utilizes that space so it's something that you can stitch out a little bit quicker. It's beautiful. I love your whimsical feather. Yeah. Thank you. It yeah. is gorgeous. Fun. Very fun. I want you to digitize it for me. <laughs> okay. I'll have it for you tomorrow. <laughs> Show us your computer okay. version, Kim. So I picked out these designs up here in the corner here, which are, it's a corner and then a border to use on this quilt. And my thought was I was going to quilt this in the inside border here. here. Can that out of your way? Because if you notice on this one here, I can actually, let me zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see. There's actually part of this design goes right down the center here. And I thought how cool it would be to have that following that line right there. And then it has this kind of a, a feathery, leafy fill. And the really nice thing about this one, just like you were saying, sometimes people are a little intimidated about how do I turn the corner in Pro mm -hmm. Stitcher. Well, this one has a corner that's already digitized, so it's super easy. I can just place it and stitch it and then take this other design and put it right there next to it and do a repeat across. But my, my overall thought here was to use this, this design in the corners, in this white border here. But then I wanted to use one of these background fills out here. And then I also wanted to use background fills inside all of these blocks. And then use something fun like this design right here, these loops, or this really fun kind of whimsical one here that has moons and stars because we've got a lot of stars in this quilt. Mm -hmm. Inside all of the white borders around the blocks. So I, for me, um, this quilt became about background fills. Yeah. And Pro Stitcher has a lot of really fun background fills that you can use. You can see I've got a bunch of them over here. And I even pulled a fun star that we could lay on top of one of these piece stars to quilt. So that, those were my thoughts about this quilt. I love using background fills. I know, Because it really emphasizes the piecing or mm -hmm. applique work if it's applique. Yeah. But yet it's nice quilting. Yeah. 
Well, and my thought is, so there's, as you can see, like on this panel right here, this, this piece right here, that's actually printed. There is sunshine in my soul. And so I would just do a fill essentially over the top of all of that. And it's going to make that saying pop without spending a ton of time on it. That's the other yeah. thing. It's going to be quick because I set up an area, I quilt it, I move on to the next block. So it's about being quick while I'm quickly getting it done too. I'm glad we're hanging out more often because maybe the quickness will rub off on me. <laughs> I want to go around all these letters and do dense quilting oh. behind it. So, And yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. let's put a little bird in each one of these little houses. Oh. Oh. I, would, I love sampler quilts. I, I would love to do some stitch in the ditch with this one too and then use that these background fills in all the white areas. You know, for me, yeah. where there's so much white in this one, it becomes about those background fills. We need to do this again with three of these quilts and have them quilted so that you Ooh. can see them all quilted. Huh? I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Just don't expect it to be quilted by the next HQ Live. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe six months from now. Huh? <laughs> okay, we have one more quilt. We're gonna... So this is a quilt top. Um, it's by Thimble Blossoms. It's cute. Yeah, it is cute. I can't read the name. On a whim. Oh. On a whim. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we use the preview paper. Um, the first thing, though, back to the questions I think about when I'm going to quilt it. Is there something that you want to stand out on the mm -hmm. quilt, or is there something you want to hide? Okay, and um, so when, when I bought this kit and this pattern, I, I just loved the colors. I love mm -hmm. two-colored quilts. I mean, like, I just love a white and a color, and... And I could see kind of the flower that the green made, right? Mm -hmm. well, when I finished it, all I could see was like a snowflake. I could just see this big white part. And so as I'm thinking of how I'm going to quilt it, I want to quilt it so that I can make the flower, or it's not really a flower, but that shape stand out more than the, the snowflake for me. Right. So, so this is just an idea. This is just a example of how oftentimes you can find more than one block or more mm -hmm. than one highlight in a quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by the way you choose to quilt it, you can kind of highlight that area. Exactly. So um, I'm not as computer literate as Kim. And so this is how I do my drawings. It's not on a computer. You know what? I still, <laughs> I still get out the graph paper too. And this is yeah. Christina. She just prints out the picture. I don't know why I didn't do that. I draw the picture and color it. And <laughs> I, I actually took a picture and then I used an app on my phone. So while I'm waiting at places, you know, standing yeah. in line, I just doodle with it on my phone. And wow. then I just printed out the, awesome. the picture so I, I would remember what to There's lots of ways to it. Lots of ways to so do figure it. Out how so. to yeah, and do Kim does all her fancy stuff Okay, right so there maybe computer. Kim, while you're talking about how you would quilt it, Christine and I can draw okay. on the, we're yeah. going to draw on the preview paper. That sounds great. Um, I, we wanted to say about the preview paper that it has, Suzanne was so smart, she put the black strip of, mm -hmm. along one, the outsides of it. Why? So that we don't draw on our quilt top. Exactly. But where I cut it, I, I get nervous. So I have to put tape on where I cut it mm -hmm. so that I, I won't draw on it there either. So Because we've all done that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but no. <laughs> I have, and I know Kelly has. Of course we have. No. We've all done it. We've all done it. It's another one of those learning moments. Yes, learning curves. Okay. So I took this quilt and Kelly sent me this picture and I sat and played with this for a little while. And I wanted to bring in a design that would have a lot of round curves because the piecing is so straight. So I picked out two different blocks in the Pro Stitcher library. These are both from the Carly Porter folder. And I put them side by side. So this bigger block here is gonna go inside this area here, the white part that she was talking about. And then this, all this circle right here is going to be right here in this center part, all this green part. And then when I put them together, I had some blank space. You can see that I left a little bit of space here in some of these areas. I just took some circles and filled in there. So I spent a little bit of time placing these. The nice thing is I've got enough of them done now that I can save this file. I'd be able to save, save it on a USB and take it to my Pro Stitcher and create an area and place each block and stitch it out. And then I found this really fun border 
in the Pro Stitcher library. Because to me, this border out here, I, even though it's, uh, it's got a lot of design on it because it's a two color, the stitching is still gonna show quite a bit. So I, found, I thought this was really fun because it reflects all the diamonds that are in the piecing, but then it also has that little circle in it. So this is the border that I would use there. So that's my, that's my quilting plan. Your guys' is taking a little longer, although I shouldn't tell you about the hour I spent setting this up. <laughs> we probably have all spent the same amount of time creating the yeah. design. Oh, I'm, mine's super slow, Christina, when you're ready. Okay, so I wanted to have the green section show up. Mm -hmm. So I kept it fairly simple, not a super dense quilting in the green. I wanted to utilize all of the space, so I've got these loops coming all of the way out. Um, I stitched in the ditch around everything, and then I'm taking kind of that same motif or similar one, and I'm going to put it in the white, the big white squares, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to do some dense quilting in the other squares to really make Hold those in. sink down, make them become the background, mm -hmm. and then the green will pop up more and be more of the focal point. Yeah. Oh, so I just was using a lot of continuous curve. Oh, and I messed that one up right there. But I just really like the arc. I would use a lot of rulers. Mm -hmm. uh, rulers are my go-to and some free motion mixed in with it. But I was just trying to, in the green, I was just doing a little bit of quilting and adding a bit more into the white so that the green would show up just a little more than the white. So I like it. Anyway. I wish that I could just take you both home with me and help me decide how to quilt every quilt because truly I still do hang them on my walls and look at them for days. And I put preview paper up and draw around. And even though my quilt thread is not going to be in black, um, by drawing it on this preview paper, it shows me if I like the lines, if I like the shape that goes with, with those lines. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do you do the same? I do, but the best part about doing the preview is that say, oh, I don't like that design. It's gone. You don't have to sit there and unpick <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. What, you don't like unquilting? No. No. <laughs> yeah, me either. I've done plenty of that. So just a few extra minutes that it takes, mm -hmm. okay, maybe an hour of designing forethought into your quilt mm -hmm. saves you so much time mm -hmm. in the quilting process. Absolutely. So, and um, talking with friends. Yeah. There are uh, getting ideas. gills out there. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, your friends. Just talk with people, and it's amazing what yeah. ideas other people will come up with that you never would have thought of. But it's several just of my really good friends. We just I text them a picture, and yep. Talene <laughs> Jeffries in South Africa is one of them. I send her a picture and say, "What would you quilt on this?" And yep. Jane and Gina, lots of friends that I send pictures yeah. to and get ideas. And it may not be the choice the, that I make, but it spurs ideas mm -hmm. in my yeah. mind and helps me in towards that process. So. Yep. Creativity is a process. Yep. I mean, it's something that you have to work on. And and hopefully, if you've watched this with us, that you're inspired to step out of your box a little bit and try some new ideas and yeah. try something new on every quilt you quilt. Yes. Yep. Whether it's a tool or a design, mm -hmm. just try something new on every quilt. Maybe even a thread or batting. Yep. A thread. We didn't even get into thread we choice. Didn't. We'll have to do that we'll another We'll do that time. another time. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our HQ Live. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just become a part of our community. Uh, com quilters are an awesome community. So join us on, on Handy Quilters' YouTube channel. And join us next month. And until then, have some fun quilting. <laughs>